Having previously set up our Firebase emulator with some nice fake data, we now have to connect our Flutter application to our emulator. This will give us the perfect environment to develop our application without racking up the balls or having a dependency on the backend being completed. We'll start off by starting the emulators which we set up previously. This will print out all the local ports that we'll need to point to when setting up our emulator connection. For the implementation, you can go to the code for the boxed-out project where we'll start in the main.dart file. At the top of our class, we'll create a new constant boolean called useEmulator and set that to true. We will also create a new function that encapsulates all the Firebase emulator setup. This function will be called connect to Firestore emulator. This function will connect to the Firebase emulator for Firestore and authentication. The first thing we'll do is to make sure that we have the correct representation of localhost for the platform that we are on. For the Android emulators, they prefer that you reference your localhost as 10.0.2.2 and for iOS, they are happy with using the localhost string to point to your localhost. Once we have that, we can go ahead and set the Firebase features we want to use to point to that localhost string. In our case, we want to point the Firestore instance to localhost port 8080 as shown in the logs. We want to disable the SSL and we want to disable the persistence of the Firestore database. Then we want to do the same thing for the Firebase auth instance. To do this for the Firebase auth, we have to call use emulator on the instance and pass in the HTTP URL to the localhost string using port 9099. These values are the values that were printed out when you started the Firebase emulator. Then we can update our main function and we'll check if use emulator is true. Then we call the connect to Firebase emulator function. To test this out, I will open up the simulator for Android. I will run the code that we have. And to make sure that you see that everything is pointing towards the Firebase local emulator, I'm going to open up the Firestore database. And when we sign up, we should get a new collection called users that has a user with the data that we entered on our device. I'll create a new account and we'll get an error saying that clear text HTTP traffic is not permitted to this URL. To fix that up, you can open up your Android manifest file and in the application tag, we'll add a new property called Android use clear text traffic and set that to true. Then we can restart our app. We'll create account again with some random details. When we sign up now, we see that it succeeds. And if we open up the emulator, we see that a new users collection was created with a document that has the from emulator email that we entered and the ID assigned to that user. If we go to the authentication tab, if we refresh, we'll see that we have a new user for the one that we just created and everything is working with the local emulator. That's all you need to set up your development for testing on the local emulator for Android and the simulator for iOS. But if you want to test on a real device, there's a few additional things that you'd have to add. The first thing is you need to get your IP address of your computer. Then you're going to open up the firebase.json file in the backend folder. And since we know we are using auth and firestore and we want to make sure that is exposed to the outside, we're going to set the host property equal to your IP for the auth and for the firestore objects. Now when you run Flutter emulators start, you'll see that instead of having localhost over here, you'll actually have your IP address. Then you have to go back to the Flutter application where you will change your localhost string to be the exact IP address that you entered for the host. This way is an extra way that I think shouldn't be done as permanent because if you are working with multiple developers, then everyone has to update their IP address every time they start or want to test with a local emulator. I think setting it up to use 
the emulator and the simulator on device is the perfect way for development and only for when you have a bug that needs to be tested on a real device you can do this quick change and then use it from your device but on your machine only that's it for this week i'm going to be creating another video that goes over the plan of what we need to develop next to get the application closer to a final usable state thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week